Thank you for being here. Thank you. Let me start with the film which made me uh, uh, laugh quite a few times. And it, it, the laughs it brings, I think, are the, the laughs you can't stop and you uh, get tears because mm -hmm. of it. Do you have the same if you watch it? Or are you not able to look at it that way anymore? Uh, I had the same when we were shooting it. Uh, but you know, once you start editing, it's all—it's so much a uh, surgical proce uh, precision in terms of producing this effect of uh, the tone that I want to give to the film. That I mean, no, I—I'm not laughing at all. I'm just looking at, you know, whether the because it was sort of like a composition that I tried to do, whether you know at what points it works and at what point it needs to be better mm -hmm. you know it's, it's always like that when you finish a film that especially for me um seeing all the problems you see if you watch it now you see yeah. you still see all the problems yeah yeah, yeah of course <laughs> and then you know I'm, I, then i stop watching it forever uh, because it's it's kind of painful <laughs> Um, and then it's kind of nice though because then you start working with a memory of your film. Uh, for example, Attenberg, which is the previous feature that I did, I still haven't watched it since I made it, since its premiere. So I work with a memory of what Attenberg is. <laughs> I would almost um, think, oh, what a, um, what a pity for you that you now can't watch the film for such a long time. Yes, but you should know that I've watched it millions of times <laughs> trying to edit. You know, it took a long time to achieve this. And it's the first time that I made a movie that was, uh, it, it was so to talkative mm -hmm. and working with dialogue and all these faces. So in a way I was very interested in making a choreography of faces yeah. and voices yeah. and to work with a tonality that was between drama and comedy. And how do you make sure that your actors um, are best in uh, bringing over your voice, which you want them to have? Um, it took a very long time casting the film. And basically, I really believe that once you cast, you have 90% of the movie. Uh, and they were all brilliant and very strong personalities. So each one of them brought a lot into the character. We 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 improvised and rehearsed a lot on the boat. So by the time we actually shot, it was almost like uh, directing as a composer, you know, where all the instruments and the, um, and the scores, the musical scores were set. And then I just had to conduct that. Um, so everything basically was prepared during the rehearsal period. And uh, how long was the rehearsal period? Uh, it was about two months. You were two months on the boat? What? No, we all have lives. Yeah. <laughs> um, and these are very, very busy actors because in Greece you can't be an actor doing just one thing. So they had television, they had theater, they had other movies. So I wouldn't rehearse with everyone at the same mm -hmm. time. I would rehearse m most of the times in, in pairs, mm -hmm. a few hours during the day. And then, in the end, we had massive rehearsals between all of us. And the interesting thing is that there are some scenes that are in the movie that some actors have, had never seen. And they weren't aware that this scene has existed. Because we're building dynamics and energies between them uh, secretly from the rest of the cast. And up until the end of the movie, when we actually shot the, um, the scene where, you know, there's the big, um, uh, you know, th that big performance that Yorgos gives, um, no one really knew who, he, who is going to be the winner. Uh, really? So there was a certain suspense this way, uh. in terms of keeping everyone uh, on the on the edge of their seat. <laughs> oh, amazing! And in that part, I had to uh, laugh so hard. I can't. I won't say now uh -huh. which part exactly because I want the audience to experience it themselves. When started this? Uh, what was the first idea of image of 
sound before making this, the first part? That's a great question because um, it, it's much easier for me to talk about you know, this, the images or the sounds that I start any movie instead of, I never start with story or I never start with like a, a you know, the production of a meaning or a, a message that I want to give. I just start with some images that I don't know where they come from, but somehow because they're so strong and they stay, I need to connect them. So the first image was of, of something that maybe would be strange sea animals or or alien bodies who just appear from the water. So that was the first image that I started thinking, interrogating this image. Who are they? Why are they coming out of the water? What and do they is want? Is that something you learned? That you just trust an image you see and then Go. Yeah, you know, so because to me that was a, a, an, impo an image that I want to figure out where it came from, then I started thinking, hmm, maybe they're divers. Why are they divers? Oh, maybe they're fishing. You know, I sort of like the idea of them as this kind of like Greek astronauts, you know, from the sea, coming, appearing from the sea, or... Um, or like sea animals um, and the idea that they come out and there is like this huge surface that blocks them. Um, and throughout the movie I, s I thought of them a bit like astronauts mm -hmm. because they are out of place, they are completely alone in the middle of the sea, you never see anyone else ever. Um, so that was one image and then the other image was the opposite, which is them living and sort of like disappearing in a city. So connecting the beginning and the end, I started thinking of the story yeah. with my co-writer, Ephemis Filippo. And also it was kind of interesting to me to think of them only of a single gender. Why? But yeah. I had made a film before called The Capsule, which was again a uh, a game of power, in a way, of sort of like, uh, it was a coming of age story between girls living in a fantastical institute in the middle of a, um, of a island that could be anywhere. Um, and they, they literally become humans and they become women. There is a science fiction horror quality about it. It was so interesting to shoot with an all-female cast in terms also of, a, of an experiment in terms of, in terms of identity and gender that I thought it would be interesting to, to do the same thing in Greece with um, a group of men and work with the idea of machismo and fragility in parallel. You know, you, you, there is this cliche of macho men, especially in the Mediterranean, but you know, you never see really movies uh, about fragile men. And to me, it was really important to show this fragility. And they were very generous with that, the actors. Yeah, how do because you? Because they were yeah. extremely open and generous and, and very graceful with that. Not hiding anything from themselves or from each other, because lots of the part of of the characters came from them. Yeah. What, yeah. what did it uh, teach you, this experience with these men on the boat? To tell you the truth, I felt, uh, I felt really great as a, as a director. I felt really grateful um, about cinema because we actually did something, you know, we we were in this, on this boat in a very enclosed environment, sort of like lost in a turbulent sea. In a way, you could see that as a metaphor of what's going on in Greece or in Europe right now. And there was so much camaraderie and community and sense of humor and resilience um, that it taught me that 
actually, you know, if there is this kind of sense of kinship and community and a sense of humor and, um, and love and passion for what you're doing, then, you know, there was not, you know, were lots of women in the crew and they're all men. They could have been sort of like a, you know, sort of like a gender conflict. You know, all this cliche stuff that we are being inherited. But there was nothing like that. You know, there was like male and female, masculine and feminine in all of us, mm -hmm. constantly. And that's something that I was really interested in, you know, sort of to show the woman in them, <laughs> as we say, it was not a problem. You know, so it was like the opposite of, of the, you know, of the sort of like programming that, you know, you think that men have. Yeah. Is it, uh, what kind of fruit would you be, actually? Uh, what kind of fruit? You would have to tell me that, because yeah. that's, that, yeah. that's the game. <laughs> but they also, for me, it's of course hard to say, because I don't know you that well, and, but they also, what, I, what is interesting, that, they, uh, that somebody mentions them a fruit and they are, um, how do you say that in o English? Offended. Yeah, they are offended. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> you know, because you would say, oh, I, won't, I think I am a cherry. Or, I, you know, you say something that, but in the end you just might be like a kiwi, you know, which has this like little, um, little fuzzy stuff outside and it looks like really ugly uh, and strange as if it's, you know, sort of like extraterrestrial, but it's one of the most delicious and Yeah, it's like, well, actually it's one of my favorite foods. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't mind being called the kiwi, but obviously uh, Joseph uh, took offense. <laughs> <laughs> and is it because, um, are we ever, um, how do you say it? Do you maybe reach your ideal be state of being if you don't care anymore? that somebody thinks you're a kiwi, that you're not the best man, person? Or is that inaccomplishable? Um, I think it's part of... I think it's part of the game to be um, flattered or offended uh, or feel alienated or feel rewarded uh, by the kind of um, image that we project to others. Chevalier is a game that we play every day, constantly. You know, it's like I, I am giving you points right now, or taking out points, you're giving me, you know, it's like an automatic yeah. thing. It's just giving a name to a game within a situation that's between fantastical and naturalist, but that's exactly what I was interested in. It was really on that crash between reality and non-reality, um, which I think created the, you know, the situation for uh, black comedy also. Um, you know, I love, I, love the, I love the fact that they were all very vulnerable. You know, they all really want to insert themselves, but in the end they're just fragile little creatures, uh, like all of us. And, you know, I think the same thing would have happened if there was a bunch of women uh, on the boat. How would, yeah, how would that be? What do you think? How, how would it be? Well, I think it would be um, maybe even more the, um, what you mentioned, the uh, movements of the boats and the... Uh, dynamics would be more, uh, how do you say that? There will be more waves in it, maybe, I would think. In the... M more ups and downs? Yeah, more ups and, exactly. More ups and downs in the uh, social structures, mm -hmm. I would think, between uh, women. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would think, but I'm of course curious what you would think, because um, what I really liked about the men, that they're, what you say, they are so open and um, mm -hmm. they are so vulnerable with each other. And maybe with women, 
of course, it's not that uh, general, but uh, they appear to be open, but maybe meet, meet on the surface more time for that to really mm -hmm. open up. What do you think? It's interesting because it, it, it seems that we have this idea that, again, it's, you know, working with cliches and especially coming from us women about what we think about us, because most of the women in the audiences so far have said, oh, if it were women, it would have been like a madhouse over there. You know, they would have like pulled each other's hair, which that's not my experience, you know, with my, you know, with my friends, with my family, with, you know, all the women that I work with. And I work with, um, with you know, lots of female crew members and collaborators. I think it's more um, a, a cliche of how us women are that's reinforced by society rather than what's really going on. Because my experience has been the opposite. What would it make a different film when it was uh, with women? I don't think so. No? Mm -mm. No? I don't think so. You know, it would, it would make a different film because there would be a different actors. But wouldn't, because the, um, the competition element, would that be as natural with women? I think so, yeah. Different strategies maybe. Uh, and again, it just depends on the personalities of the actors. Um, because lots of the personalities inform the characters, which were different in the script that Ephemis and I had written. It, it evolved through them. Uh, Chevalier would have been a different film a, a lot if I had cast different actors. So I don't like generalizing, you know, because, you know, you have 10 different boats next to each other uh, playing Chevalier and they would all be completely different, you know, in one and, and the different outcome, you know, there would be different outcomes yeah. too. The energy of the actors that I chose and the kind of tone that I want to have is what it had the, the outcome that Chevalier had. You know, it would be interesting to see if it was a series, for example. You know, one of these, uh, um, you know, real, real life series, you know, how it would be. What would you choose as a, a, a competition element? What would you want to do? Uh, what would be my, my contest? Yeah. Um, I think it would have something to do with uh, singing. Um, because I'm so bad at it. You know, I'm like the worst singer ever. And maybe with whistling. You know, whistle. Ah, really? Yeah, yeah because yeah. I can't whistle. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, I can do like... Can you whistle? <gasps> See, you're my hero. Like, <laughs> You got Already, 200 yeah. points. <laughs> yes. Let's see, you're like, you won my Chevalier right there. And because I can't whistle, like, this is so amazing to me. Also, I can't drive, so there would definitely be like a driving, like anything that I can do, and I love other people watching do, um, that would be my contest. Whistling and driving. <laughs> Thank Whistling you very and driving. much for your time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Whistling and driving. <laughs> you can't whistle. Is it uh, something you can learn or? Uh? I've tried, believe me. <laughs> I've tried a lot. I just can't. Maybe it has to do with my lips, I don't, the anatomy of mine. Yeah. So I would probably lose, you know, an entire game, even if I was great at everything. Yeah. It was funny also that at the beginning of the film, you already, in your mind, are figuring out who do you think is going to win well, you don't yet know the character since it's just starting. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice. Uh, Did you know who won? I thought, I, uh, I thought he, w he would, yeah. Really? But, I, and, but then I also thought, I don't know why. I thought that maybe because he's so, uh, yeah, this role model for 
strength mm -hmm. and uh, mm. also uh, yeah authority also maybe yeah, yeah. yeah which is interesting because it's also something saying about yourself of course mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah yeah so mm. it's a very interesting it's mm. a very interesting uh, experiment and film and also you know different people think that different ones you know we have like a different pony like in horse races you know so many people wanted Dimitri to win and they thought he would win because he's the so cute and so well-meaning and yeah. so sincere and you know very loving yeah uh, yeah so it's nice to to see that there is not there is no logic you know there's n there's nothing pragmatic and yeah. objective about it it's all absolutely subjective yeah. and in the end there is not really a winner no. and did you have fun writing yeah yeah i can imagine a lot it looked like that it looked like there a was lot. a lot of fun in we making had it. lots of contests you know that we're writing because you can have so many right <laughs> yeah everything can be and it i think uh it adds a lot of fun to life if you mm -hmm. incorporate it yeah, I mean, I actually know people who have started playing it. Yeah, and how do they do that? Um, I think in just gatherings and parties. Yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah. Um, just starting doing contests and then just running around the house and yeah. doing stuff. <laughs> it's like another kind of board game. Yeah. You know, but you yeah. do it with like your body and. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious because the contest is hilarious. Thinking about it is hilarious because mm -hmm. it's also a contest within a contest who yeah. makes the nicest assignments. Yeah. And, it, and in the end, you have this speech, which is uh, also very funny mm. because then you can also uh, win. Yeah, it was very funny. I have to <laughs> laugh, laugh again thinking about it. Thank you.